Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Trick Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing once again AMD Ryzen. Specifically, this is focused on benchmarks, although there are a few other bits and pieces in this video as well. It is just a few days until Ryzen 7 releases. Naturally, the other processors in the, in the Ryzen lineup, excuse me, will emerge over the following months. That would be Ryzen 5, which will be the 6 core processors, and Ryzen 3, which will be the quad core processors. And in the Ryzen 3 lineup, there will be certain processors at the very low end which will not feature SMT. Most of these leaks do originate from China, and a number of you messaged me regarding these, at least perhaps two dozen of you. So it would be incredibly time consuming for me to thank one person individually. So just thank you to everyone who have messaged me regarding all of these benchmarks. It's greatly appreciated. And as usual, if these benchmarks turn out to be inaccurate because they're fake, well, that's unfortunately just the nature of things. Once again, when we do get our own processor, um, which will be the 1700X, it will be very curious how the processor actually really does perform in differing real-world scenarios. But now we've got the caveats out of the way, we're going to be starting out with a website called, and I'm probably going to butcher the name, mycontole.com, which is a very interesting uh, website name. I'm sure it means something profound, but wait, well, there it is. Um, so what this has is pass now, a pass mark, excuse me, CPU uh, performance data, which has the i7 7700K um, and the 1800X, the 6900K, the 6800K, and finally the FX 5, uh, 9590. As one can imagine, Ryzen does slightly lose out to the 7700K simply because of clock speed, but as we start going down the um, the graphs, you can see that the uh, 1800X it does win in floating point performance, it wins in integer maps by a lot actually. Um, compression, encryption, sorting, and well just about everything else under the sun. In other words, it basically ruffle stomps all of the Intel CPUs on testing aside from the single threaded performance. Naturally, previous versions of um, AMD's recent CPUs have not been particularly amazing when it comes to floating point performance, so it's nice to see that that is quite improved, but that's not particularly surprising either, given what we know AMD have changed about the architecture. So, now next one is CPU Z benchmarks. Another pretty uh, popular benchmark utility. This one is perhaps the most damning for Intel out of all of them because this particular benchmark has the performance higher with the Ryzen CPU single thread even than the 7700K. You're looking at 2327 versus 2301. I'll grant you that's not a particularly massive improvement or anything like that. It's not going to set the world alight, but it is still higher performance with the Ryzen than what is basically the highest clocked CPU Intel have to offer? When we start looking at multi-threading, however, you have a performance of almost 20,000. And that is insane. To put that into some level of perspective, the 7700K just gets shy of 10,000. And naturally, also ruffle stomps the 4790K, which got, gets around 8,300. Which is not awful or anything like that. And even higher than that, I mean, if you were to keep going, you can see massive disparities between core count. Let's say 12 threads, um, it pretty much destroys their 6850K. You're getting 11,170 versus almost 20,000. And obviously the 4960X just gets a shy, just, just ever so slightly under the 11,000 range. Basically, this CPU on 12 threads versus Ryzen's 8, absolute, I'm sorry, Ryzen 16, absolutely no contest. And then if you continue on, the trend just gets worse. 6950X scores are just slightly under 16,000. And then once again, you have Ryzen at 20,000 points, which is just completely bonkers and pretty much dwarfs any of the current i7s that Intel have to offer. This probably is one of the reasons that Intel are working 
at least allegedly on that 12 core 24 thread processor for Skylake X, which I covered in the other video today, so you can check that out if you want more information. Okay, one more set of benchmarks, and then we're going to finalize with the last pieces of news. So there is another post which has popped up from PCEVA. Now these are forums, and they compare various processors, including the Intel and AMD's latest and greatest. These are all in Chinese, which is not particularly surprising, given this is pretty much how the leaks go. It's a 1700X running at 3.4 GHz versus a 6800K running at 3.4 GHz. Both are equipped with 16 GB of RAM, but the Intel platform is running at 2400, while the AMD platform is running at just 2133 MHz, and the GPU in question is an RX 480 in both boards with the same OS. So... I won't go and read all of the results because I think they are fairly self-explanatory. Um, you can basically read them yourself, and it also gives you the delta, the performance delta, um, how much Intel or AMD win or lose in a particular benchmark. Ludashi is a Chinese benchmark, from what I understand. I don't know terribly how accurate it is because I've never used it personally so feel free to give some insight into that. There is a slight discrepancy with the 6800K it does win in certain benchmarks. For example um, if you were to look at Cinebench R15 ST which I'm assuming means single thread it's about 1.3% faster the Intel CPU whereas on the other hand Battlefield is slightly faster on Intel's platform, as well as Call of Duty 13. Um, CSGO, slightly faster on AMDs. And this continues, this continues, this continues. As I said, I won't read all of them, because I'll just be here all day. But even Tomb Raider, uh, the minimum performance is pretty respectable across both Civilization 6. Faster, Tom Clancy's Division, it's faster. So now with DX12 games can be up to 20% difference on AMD's hardware, which is very impressive indeed. Personally, I would like to have seen a faster GPU, um, but it is what it is. I would like to have seen this run on, like, at least two 4 8s. Ideally, I'd like to have seen it run on a 1080, but it is what it is. You know, we've got the results we've got. And finally, AMD have posted on their official Twitter account that Ryzen is going to run up to DDR4 3400 memory. There were some reports to tell us that this is not the case on launch. Personally, I would still suggest being a little cautious before buying a really high-end RAM st uh, set. Um, from what we can understand, this was running on a Crosshair 6 Hero, and basically... You can see the full Wraith cooler and everything else in all of its glory, and it looks like they're running an RX 480. Um, and once again, the RAM timings are fairly tight. How much of a difference RAM, t RAM speed or timing make in the real world with Ryzen, we just do not know yet, because obviously we just don't have that type of data. But it is what it is. Personally, I'm really liking the look of the Wraith cooler. I think it looks kind of juicy. Um, this is running on a Ryzen 7 1700, which is good. Because it means that, you know, even the lower end, 1700, is it still capable of handling pretty fast memory. Um, so I'm personally quite excited about all of this. The only questions I have is, like, how well does it scale across games? Will there be any bugs on launch? Which I guess we're going to find out together if you're ordering. And the other thing, and this one's perhaps the biggest out of all of them, what the hell is happening with Vega? Seriously. Like, Ryzen, all the news with Ryzen is great, and I'm happy that AMD are going to be competitive again in the CPU arena, but Ryzen is only one part of their business. I really want to see what the hell's going on with Vega. There have been a couple of little posts here and there. AMD have shown off, like, Star Wars Battlefront again. I swear to God, they have a love affair for that game. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the Vega architecture runs really well on it. Maybe they're having bugs in their drivers, and therefore certain games are crashing. Maybe it doesn't work well on DirectX. To be fair, Raj Akadori has mentioned a couple of times that they're still getting DX11 performance up with the Vega, um, with the Vega architectures. So that could be another reason. We do know 80% of their team are currently working 
on a driver team, just to clarify, are working on Vega. And I'm going to guess we're going to learn a lot more about all of this at the Capsation event over the next few days. Now, just to clarify, we will, of course, be tackling Ryzen when it's released. Um, just to reiterate, I know I've said this in a couple of other videos, I'm waiting on a Ryzen 7 1700X as well as a Asus X70 motherboard. Um, we've got the memory, we've got a couple of sets of memory here. Uh, we're going to be running it with a decent cooler. I'm not quite sure which one at the start. So we're going to be definitely testing some stuff out together and I'll be comparing its single thread performance across a multitude of different benchmarks as well. So I'll also try to make that a build log if at all practical. I'm not quite sure what the building condition is going to be yet. So we'll have to see. In other words, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to be building the machine just because I'm still kind of doing some moving at the moment, which absolutely sucks. But and with all of that said, we are also going to be reviewing a new case as well. I've got all of the benchmarks now for the test rig. That's being edited. I finished two scripts. That's great. So basically the computer review that we've been working on, that will be up uh, the next couple of days. We have two graphics card reviews which are almost finished and we have another one which is kind of started. We've got the benchmarks but I've done no editing but we've got the photography for it. We've got another keyboard review we're starting and there is some other stuff in the pipeline as well which I don't really want to discuss here because we're just going to take too much video time up. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.